Over the last few weeks, I have continued to work on this Zinc 7000 based development board or PCB. I've been working through an online course from FedEvil. Uh, Phil from Phil's Lab presents a course titled Advanced Digital Hardware Design, and this has been a great course and really has been it's been influencing what I've been trying to to build out here. Kind of learning and uh, working my way through this really just as a learning tool. And uh, at this point, you know, I probably have a decent feel for what the overall system is looking like. And, you know, I've been going back through my schematic and trying to just validate and see what I can catch for mistakes now versus later after I order PCBs. I've also been working on routing and I have everything technically connected at this point. Uh, so I suppose you could say it's fully routed, but it's not done. And what I mean by that is I have all of this length matching that I need to do, especially when I come down here and I start looking at these two RAM chips. There's a lot of work that I have to do to get all of the length matching uh, done in this. And so that's, that's going to take me a, a bit of effort along with uh, some other connections. I think I have the length matching done up here for the HDMI and you'll see some of, you know, these little, uh, squiggles in here to to get me to to have that line up lengthwise but I've got to do the same thing and uh, work my way around this for things like this memory uh, also do the same thing for any of my signals that are going out to these connectors I'm going to try to length match all of that uh, so that at least as it leaves this board they're they're lined up lengthwise uh, correctly uh, but now that I've gone through, you know, maybe Phil's course and have a good feel for the overall how my board is coming together, I'm going to start over on that course and kind of take it from the beginning and just really pay attention to a lot more of the small details that probably going through it the first time I wasn't paying attention to or uh, it was just information overload too much uh, to, to take in at once. So I think on the second pass, I'll pick up uh, quite a bit more uh, additional little things that I'll, I'll Im implement here in my PCB design as I go. And that's probably going to take me a while. It's, I probably have another month, maybe two months, just in that phase of this, just to, to really make sure that this thing is as good as I can get it, at least before I would order it, hoping not to order a board that is a complete failure, but something that at least uh, works and, and leaves room for, for future improvement. Now the way the board sits today, this is what you're seeing. I've um, I haven't ordered any PCBs, but I've been versioning this, so I'm up to like a .03. This is the third version, and this version, what I'm working on is an eight-layer PCB, and size-wise, I'm doing 158 by 135 millimeters. That's the footprint that you see here right now. I was hoping to get it into 100 squared, so 100 by 100 uh, millimeter but i found this was just too much to be packing into that and really for my level of skill in routing these kind of boards it was just too much at least for an eight layer board so i considered a 10 layer board which that would have doubled the price of the board so i didn't like that idea uh, or i could go with a larger board than 100 by 100 and that's where i ended up with this and it only increased the price by about 15 percent. so that really wasn't a big deal compared to double the price to go to 10 layer and so that's what I've got. And you can kind of see the stack up I'm using. So signal, ground, signal, ground, signal, power, ground, signal. And then for the signal layers, I'm also doing a copper fill after you know I had everything laid out and routed. Then I went in and filled either with ground. Uh, this signal layer has some 1.8 and some 1.35. And then these signal layers have 1.0 and 3.3. Now on the power layer, I have copper areas for 5 volt, 1 volt, 1.8, 1 1.35, and 0 0.675. Now as I've been doing this, I've tried to you know get more oh, diligent about capacitor layout. So I'm sure this still has a lot of room for improvement, but this is uh, my, my first run at really trying to lay these out in a, in a proper way. And so these smaller capacitors are 201s, so these are tiny. And then I have some 402s, probably here is a 402, and some 603s. Just depends on what value I needed for them. And I really did want to get the 201s underneath here. I don't know how easily I'll be able to solder them, but I figured I'll give it a shot and I'll see what I can do here. So I've got those uh, 201s on there. Uh, but this, uh, I think, layout is probably 
I'm hoping it's okay. And if any of you have suggestions as you're picking up glimpses of this uh, that you say, hmm, that doesn't look good or look right, uh, let me know. But I'm trying to do my best to to really directly have things covered here as best as I can when there's uh, whatever power uh, with a nearby ground that I can put a cap on right underneath. Um, or placing it as close as possible to the package here. I'm sure I could uh, pull some of these caps in and do a better job, but I think this is pretty good uh, for, for where I'm at. But definitely, uh, if you have things that you'd recommend there, let me know. Uh, if I flip back over here, you know, I've got all of my different power rails. I kind of put these boxes around just so I could remember what part of the board I'm generating uh, the different rails. And so here's my 3.3, the 1.0, etc. as you come through these. And uh, most of these are using this, uh, it's a TPS uh, 56628. Uh, but then this one here is my 0 0.675 and that's using a slightly different uh, regulator. Uh, but I got all my, my rails being, being created there. I did end up you know, having this program header here. This is gonna support this Digilent HS3 uh, programmer. So I can plug in there. I believe I got that laid out correctly. Uh, HDMI connector I put on the back side just uh, so I wasn't crossing over when I was doing routing. I uh, just facilitated a little bit better routing. And I've got this uh, this IC here. This It's a TPD12S16 uh, that really is kind of, uh, I think, ESD protection and whatever else uh, that goes through that chip. Uh, maybe some there's some voltage type of things. But uh, anyways, that, uh, that chip is supporting the HDMI out and... Uh, if I come over here, I've got my micro SD card along with its supporting uh, IC. I have my USB AB. This is so that I can be either a USB host or a USB device and a PHY that goes with that. Coming down, I have my USB C. I can bring in 5 volt through that. And then, of course, uh, programming and serial communication. I can also bring in 5 volt through this DC barrel connector down here. And I have jumpers so that I can select uh, which of those is going to provide the five volt. You know, so in most cases, uh, I think I'll probably use the DC barrel connector, and I'll just put the jumpers on the bottom two here, and that's that's what's going to feed my power. And I did fuse that along with the fuse for the USB C. Uh, I've got my boot mode selections here. I've got a serial EE prom that goes with this FT twenty two thirty two. On the back side is my actual flash for the programming for the sock. And I had some extra pins on my processing system that weren't being used. So I just ran them out to this little header. Initially, I was hoping to run those up to this left side of this 68 pin connector up here. Uh, but it ends up that those signals that weren't being used are down in this quadrant of this chip. And I have a lot of busyness across here. So trying to get all of those routed up through all of that um, just didn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. So I just routed them out over here to this little 1.27 millimeter header. And that way, if I ever do need to access those, there's seven signals and a ground in this little header that I could use. I probably could go with a bigger header and have more grounds, but I, I, I figure for what I'm likely not going to use that. But if I do need it, I'm sure I can get by with a single ground in there. A lot of the other, you know, IO that's not being used for onboard stuff is going out through these 68 pin uh, connectors. But I would say there's still a lot of signals that I'm not using. Uh, this, this specific sock has so many IOs and, you know, I'm running out a bunch of them through these connectors but there's a lot more I think I could leverage if I needed something on the board or wanted to add another one of these connectors and try to route that stuff out. You have my, my, my memory down here, and, and for now, again, this is routed, but I don't have it length match, so I'll jump to a, a different view here uh, shortly, but you'll see that really I'm running all the signals across like this, so I'm doing this a uh, flyby type of approach if I understand how that's done correctly. And so I'll come out of my sock into one of the DDRs and then into the other and then to termination over here. 
other than the, the distinct uh, data lines, which there's a separate set of data lines for each of these. But that's kind of where it's sitting uh, right now. And maybe I could jump over to the PCB design and just take a look at what this uh, looks like. And I think for now, I'll just turn off all the layers and I'll just walk through this layer by layer so you can kind of see what I have. And I'm going to turn off, let's see, copper not visible. So this is uh, what my top layer looks like. And uh, if I just cycle through these uh, really quickly. So that's my top layer. And then I have my bottom side layer. And then I also have a power layer, which uh, I'll show a different picture of that here in a little bit. But that's what's on my power layer at the moment. And I might, yeah, I might come back and do something with these uh, here later. But um, that's what's here right now. Uh, but I can kind of click my way through this and just actually if I flip over I have a just something to help me visualize it a little bit and you know, this is kind of what I have set up I'm sure it can be very much improved and actually I wouldn't mind maybe changing placement of some of my regulators around the, the buck converters uh, but this is this is how it's sitting right now so I bring in five volt, and on that power layer, I've got a fill section for the five volt. I have a three three volt, and then it has some connections to these other three three volts. Um, now this is just on the power layer, and then of course I have three three volt as a fill on another entire layer outside of my my routing on a different signal layer. And then I also have a really uh, pretty thick connection between this uh, down to these two 3.3 three volts. So hopefully they're tied together well enough. Uh, I've got my 0 0.675 volt, again, for my DDR termination, uh, 135, a 18, and my 10. And you know these are coming out of those buck regulators uh, in these cases. And that's, that's what all of these are doing is coming out of the, the regulators having a copper fill uh, for that voltage in the power plane. And I can kind of see, work my way through that. And I did have some traces and I was actually, as I was looking at this, I may, might come back and see if I can get rid of those. Like here, there's really no need for this since I've got this fill. Uh, let's see, this is a 1.0, I can probably get rid of that. Uh, but I do have some 1.8 in here that I'd have to make sure I've got addressed properly. And then there's my 1.8 over here, and 3.3, 3, 1.35, and then 0 0.675. So those are the ones that I have uh, at that point. Uh, going back over to my layers, and that was my power layer. If I take a look at this other signal layer, uh, I've got a signal layer that looks like that, and I have another signal layer that looks like that. So I've got those those signal layers accordingly. And I think that's about it. So ground, signal, ground, signal, power. Work my way up to bottom and top. And if I just view everything, that's what it looks like without the copper fills. Things like up here, the HDMI, you know, I do have that length matching done. So I can come into this tool and say, you know, all of these signals need to be length matched. And then I can, you know, actually check on that. And it's part of my DRC check. And if I go to my DRC and I check for DRC, last I checked it, at least there were no errors. Uh, now what I haven't done is come in and said, well, I want length matching on these and I want length matching on these and I'll do length matching on all of these over here. Uh, so all of that I need to, to work through yet. You know, and you look at this down here, uh, this took me a bit of time and I know I have a lot more time to put into this, but really it's, it's bringing out all of the different uh, signals for this for this uh, memory, either address or data signals. So all the data signals I, I bring through uh, this LSW to the MSW to the, the termination, addressing signals, actually the addressing signals come all the way through the data signals where I've got 16 that go to one and 16 that go to the other. 
I'm sure there's better ways to do this than how I did it, but this is how I this was how I was able to get it routed. Now again, I've got to come in here and do all the length matching. So I might have some of these that are longer than some of these that I'll have to come in here and, and add length to a lot of these signals to get them all to, to match. And I think I need to figure in, you know, what does a via do to that as far as that uh, time it takes to get from a ball here to a ball over here? And do I need to do something to account for that? In other words, if I have a V on one but not on another, the one without the V, I suppose I need to lengthen a little bit further. But that's all stuff that I'm going to go back and, and watch through Phil's stuff again and see what I can do to improve this. Uh, so I've got to do all the length matching yet and uh, i'll work on that but this is routed and, and ready to roll as far as that's concerned but this is all routed so that at least i know the connections are there now i just have to get them to the right length and see what other things i can fix up as i go and i think as i get into my power planes you know flipping over to oh this one again and maybe I'll turn those on to be visible. So I'll go back and set my copper to be visible. But now I can kind of see up here, okay, here's my 3-3, and then I'm gonna distribute 3-3 like that. In addition to that, I have then my 1.0 that comes down like so. And I've gotta work my way around. Again, there's my five volt, uh, there's my 1.8, now, if I just go to the top layer for a minute, you know, when it comes to connecting these uh, three three volts, you know, I do bring this out through a pretty thick trace. You can see that comes all the way down uh, to connect those other two, and that is a two point five four millimeter. So I mean, it's not like it's crazy uh, in size, but pretty thick. That that hopefully then gets me connected in between. Oh, let's see, you know, this up here, which is three three along with this 3.3, three, three. and then if I keep going down, there's this 3.3. Three, three. So hopefully uh, th that's all sufficient for that. Uh, in addition, I have a layer that is filled with 3.3, three. and so going back and just using this as a cheat sheet, I had marked that the bottom is also filled with 3.3. Three, three. So if I go to the bottom layer and I look at its fill, you know, this is what it looks like. So it's got quite a bit of uh, fill that is 3.3. And so if I want to just see just that for a second, you know, that's what it looks like. So it's got a lot of 3.3 that I can use. I need to come in and add a whole bunch of vias and try to better connect everything as, as I go here. Uh, so you'll see a lot more vias trying to, to connect all this stuff up. But right now I think I'm I'm sitting okay. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go turn off the showing of copper again so that you can kind of see it like this. It's probably the, the main thing of where I'm at right now. So I guess, you know, going back to the 3D, you know, I think the layout seems fine. You know, I should have plenty of space between my connectors, the HDMI output is here if i want an hdmi input i did route all of those signals up to this connector so i could go from one of these connectors to a small pcb that maybe takes in hdmi as an example and that might be a fun fun test you know could i take a connector and one of these uh, tpd ic's put it on a separate board as a little capture board plug it in and have signal quality all the way through to actually make that capture work. Um, so that'll be something down the road if I could get to that. I'm not sure, but something I could do. You know, obviously the, the things that I want to probably actually test is my actual power setup. You know, do I have all of this set up in a way that it's sequenced, everything turns on, everything works, I get all my status LEDs. You know, so I could probably order the PCBs today and at least start testing that much of it. Um, I did go with, maybe I could pull up the DRC for a minute. And if I go to the uh, design rules, 
you know, I do have my vias, um, as far as via size, uh, pretty small, but I'm, I'm going down to a minimum inner of three and minimum outer of four. So 0 0.3, 0 0.4 millimeter. Uh, I can go smaller with that with JLC PCB, but I think I can get through this with just that for the minimum. You know, if I get into all of my tracks, um, I've set the, the the minimum to 0 0.09, but really what I'm 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 really using is is a 0 0.1 for pretty much everything that you see as the smallest. I don't have anything that I'm using underneath that. So this I actually set as a 0.1, but it, for some reason in here it shows a 0.099. Uh, but that's what that trace is. You know, that's what almost all of these are, uh, unless you see something that you can tell is obviously thicker. Like uh, this one here is a 0.2. So this has been a lot of work, and I'm learning a lot as I go through this. I know just going back and critiquing it myself, there's all kinds of things that I would like to see better. And I'll want to work on those, you know, so it's trying to get the the routing done cleaner, trying to reduce the number of vias, trying to uh, keep signals that are part of a set on the same layer, if at all possible. And if not, then to try to figure out, do I have all of the, the length matching set up in a way that will be successful? Hoping the power setup on here looks okay. And I think that's pretty much where I'm at. So uh, next steps for me is, is really just I need to get in here on the design side and I can set up all my differential pairs. I can set up equal length groups. For example, I have an equal, equal length group for each of these and I just say which signals are part of that equal length group. And then I can get into my design rules Uh, I think the only one I've done so far is the HDMI, so net length. And if I scroll down here, Ethernet, Ethernet. Okay, so here's my oh, HDMI transmit should be set to that. And I don't have something set up for this Ethernet yet, so I'll have to work on that. So HDMI should use this HDMI transmit rule. And if I come over here, HDMI transmit says, well, the length should be between 44 and 46 millimeter is what I set it to. And I'll get different errors now, I think, at this point. But um, so then these are ones that I would want to clean up. So that's the type of work I've got to do, though. So now I come up here and see, OK, uh, it doesn't like, you know, I told it it should be. And actually, it looks like I just need to change the rule because I changed some of the placement of this. And I can see I'm, oh, let's say 60 and a half. So let's just say I want to go between 60 and a half and 62. So I can come into this and say I want to make sure that they're all within a length of, oh, let's just say 61 to 62 millimeters. And then I'll confirm that. I'll rerun my DRC and I'm going to have error still, but now I can go to this one and it says it's 60 and it needs to be at least 61. So then I could do something with that. And the way these work is I can come in here and I can see, okay, that is uh, 66 for that. Oh, I plugged in. Okay. Yeah, actually I've got some that are longer uh, here. So 66 is pretty long. So I might need to come in. Maybe what I could do is just get rid of some of these. So let me quickly just take these out. Okay, so then if I just check where this sits, I still have errors, but I kind of want to see. Um, okay. And with that, I also have some differential pairs set up. So I, I can see I messed up some differential pairs, but I want those to be within 0.254. So I'll have to then go into like one of these tracks and say, okay, let's fix that. And then if I look, I can ignore the copper regions. I just need to rebuild my copper. Uh, but then I have some lengths that are 59 up to 64. 
So it looks like the longest I have is this. Oh, here's a 66. So I have a length that is 66 in one of these. And so that looks like that's my longest one right there. And so what I might just do is go into my design rule, go to my transmit and say that I want everything to be between oh, 66 and 67, which of course I'm going to get errors now that they don't fall within that range, but now I can start working through them and saying, okay, I got some of these that I need to work on. Uh, this one is 66.7, I'm good there. This one is too short, so I'll just, uh, actually I can come up here and do a route, and there, I just always hit Shift A, but there's a Shift A equal length tuning. And so now I can just draw these in, and it shows me down below at what point am I in my rules. And so like that one there looks pretty decent. So I'm matching the differential pair and the net length. Uh, I can make these uh, shorter vertically, but then take up more of this length or I can step it up. So I'll just find a spot that seems decent here. And then let me go see what I've got left. Okay, so now I'm down to copper regions. So I'm just going to rebuild my copper. So I hit Shift B. That rebuilds all my copper. And then I will go ahead and do another uh, DRC check now that my copper has been rebuilt. And that's all the copper fill. So as I've been moving things around, I just need to uh, clean that up to, to match. So I will do another check DRC. Okay, now I'm back down to, to no error. So I'm checking that these are, um, A, my differential pairs are within whatever it was, 0.254, and that the entire set of them are within one millimeter. And so again, I go back to my design rules and double check that but for HDMI they have to be between 66 and 67 millimeters and then the differential pair rule uh, looks like this it just says it's got to be uh, looks like 0.254 as the uh, tolerance for the the length difference and so I need to do more reading on that and find out is that tolerance uh, acceptable uh, etc but now these should be length matched, I should be okay for the differential pair and for this overall set for HDMI, but those are the only ones that I have set up so far. You saw I had some of the other groupings in for other things like the ethernet, but I don't have this actually, I don't have all the rules in place for it yet. And I definitely don't have the ethernet lines uh, length matched. And then I'm gonna have to do that for all of these going to these connectors. So I'm gonna try to length match everything going out. And then the really hard one for me is going to be all of this is going to have to be done in the same way. Uh, so that's the type of stuff that I will slowly work my way through trying to get uh, that all done. And I think that's going to cause this to get pretty busy. You know, if I've got to space these out better and I am on different layers, so maybe I've got enough space here. So if I just say top layer, you know, can I, to have enough room there to to add those uh, little waves uh, probably bottom doesn't look so bad this is pretty busy over here um, so maybe some of this will have to get spread out more and if i look at some of these signal layers again hopefully have room to do any length matching that needs to be done and so some of that will look different by the time i get through through all of this Okay, anyways, that's the type of work I've got to do. So trying to get all of these 
you know, design rules built. So I've got the HDMI transmit. Great. Now I need to add rules for all of these other groupings and then come over here and actually apply those rules in these uh, different groupings like net length or differential pair. And then fix it all as uh, as it'll fail, of course, because I don't have things matched. So interface seems OK. I imagine there's more professional tools that do a better job with helping with all this length matching. But this um, seems OK. It seems to, to guide me through it well enough that I can figure it out. I'm sure I'm missing something else I worked on here, but uh, I'll, I'll stop rambling here. Uh, if you've got thoughts on what you're seeing so far, you know, I'm especially looking for things that you think are things I should try to keep in the design or you look at it and say, hmm, that probably wasn't the way to do it and I should rethink something, uh, do let me know. I'm especially concerned with things that would prevent this you know, system, the core, from even working. You know, so that just means that you know, if, if my HDMI doesn't work but other things work, okay, that's not such a huge deal to me, at least not in the first version. But if I have a problem with my power or just, you know, getting the, the main processor or the, well, the main processor running on this, you know, so get that sock up and running, you know, reading off of the serial or the, the yeah, the flash down here, the QSPI flash, that's where I'm going to have, uh, I'll be unhappy if I go to the cost, through the cost of ordering this board to find out that I can't even get the basics up and running. And you can see how I did this. This is all VN pad, maybe my last comment there. And uh, and if I did look at, again, point one is what I'm routing all of those as. And then via in pad is what I'm doing for all of those. But anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, again, let me know uh, what you have for suggestions or uh, what I could better speak to next time. But hopefully next time I come back with a video, I will have done further checking on the schematic. I will have further cleaned up the routing and have all my length matching done, uh, both differential pair and for groupings. But good enough. Thanks all.